muted. And the first question is going to be for Ashley. Hi, Sophia and Justice. Hi. 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 My name is Ashley from With Ashley and Co. and the Geek Girls Universe podcast. Thank you for taking time to chat with us today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you, guys. So I'm a total D&D noob, and I had an actual an absolute blast watching this movie how familiar were you guys with it before you got involved and if you were already familiar with it then i have to ask about your characters obviously uh-huh. when you play at home <laughs> oh you don't need to know sophia that is sophia's played before i never i've never played before we did play as a cast though before we started shooting which was really fun because we got to flesh out our characters even more but sophia why don't you tell them what your character's name was oh, no. in high do you, school do you think it's allowed Am I yeah, allowed? <laughs> it's inappropriate, so feel free to censor it as you need. Okay, censor this if need be. Um, my character was a rogue. Um, my, <laughs> yes. my character was called Vibrator. Um, he was a boy who vibrates. That was all that he could do. And um, his... Um, <laughs> oh, God. His catchphrase was, it's not a sex thing. And basically, (laughs) I had a really lot of fun playing that character because I got to, like, add this little extra table of just, like, kind of, like, his just, like, specifically, like, this, his, like, kind of a spell slot kind of thing, but it was, like, with vibrating. So it was, like, each level he'd learn, like, a new, like, he'd, like, learn to, like, make an imagery of himself or vibrate through walls at one point, Mm. you know, but, like, that would take up a lot of time, and, you know, so it's kind of, like, how would that affect him? How would that, you know, Mm. um, would that, you know, be, like, a would something happen afterwards like a, a dis you know he would like have a disadvantage on next roles because he's tired whatever you know that kind of thing so it was uh yeah it was fun to figure out um i didn't get to play a lot with uh, as him so i wish but i don't want to talk about him anymore <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah i played a little bit in high school cool yeah <laughs> what are the reactions i can't look at them <laughs> they're laughing okay <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> Thank you. All right, our next one is at Jana. So my name is Jana, and I'm with Whiskey and Sunshine, and I also co-host Geek Girls Universe podcast with Ashley. Uh, so I actually thought I was a D and D nerd in high school, but clearly, um, Sophia, you far outdo whatever no. craziness I did with my <laughs> high school friends, uh, which is fantastic. I love it. So. Uh, This movie was filled with lots of Easter eggs for people who are fans of the lore, but obviously was super fun for people who knew nothing of D&D. What, um, obviously, like, Thembershot, and there's some other great Easter eggs, but do you guys have any favorites that were included in the movie? I really liked the tabaxi. Um, I mean, I didn't know much about the D&D lore before shooting, but I got to spend two weeks in quarantine with these big... Uh, D&D textbooks, so I learned so much about the the universe, and uh, it was really cool to see the tabaxi realized. The dragonborn beggar was really cool. Uh, the animatronics on this movie are phenomenal, uh, as are the VFX, but the company that did the animatronics, Legacy, just put so much time into the details of these creatures, um, and... It's amazing as an actor to be able to actually play off of something that's there instead of like a tennis ball or a a man in a green suit. Uh, But yeah, Tabaxi and Dragonborn were my favorite. My favorite character was um, my character. Um, What? (laughs) Well, I mean, like I always found uh, um, tieflings to be really interesting because it's like... It's, like, not just, like, a demon thing, but it's also, like, if they ever, like, you know, it's, like, also almost, like, a a genetic thing as well. And the way they wrote her where she's, you know, uh, because usually people make them, like, a, um, like, a, in, like, the evil category, like, you know, you know, like, maybe lawful evil or something, or maybe even neutral, but she was, like, this, uh, a lawful good in order to, like, because that made her kind of, in order to, um, go in a different direction, you know, and and, and it made her a really interesting character to play. And I always found tieflings to be really interesting. I've never played a tiefling, but, um, yeah, so my character, (laughs) my character's my favorite character. 
Anyways. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Next one we have Zoe. Hi, I'm Zoe from Zoe the Movies and Kids First. Um, and this film is like a visual banquet. And with that, uh, I understand that there's a lot of practical effects and not all CGI, but despite that, the film just looks so real. So if you could almost relive one of the scenes that you guys shot, but in real life, um, what scene do you think would be super fun, I guess, to relive? Uh, probably the Tribor theater scene where uh, you meet my character. That was really fun to shoot all the the magical mishaps That's and my favorite flying scene through the air. Movie. That was also the very last scene we shot really? of, of the movie. Yeah, well, it was the crazy? best one I think. So because we had time to marinate, marinate. it. Yeah, marinate. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I loved getting thrown in the air and doing all those flips and stuff. That That's was really so cool. fun. I would love to do that in yeah. in real life. Um, what would I like to do again? Oof, it's hard to hard to choose. I'm just um, <laughs> what did I like to do with you guys? Uh, I like the one with <laughs> the water. The water was kind of fun. I know everyone didn't like it, but I was like... She was talking about, like, something that you would want to do in, like, real life. Oh, like, real life! Like, something that happened life. in the movie that you would want to do in real life. Jeez, I, like, I, I turn into animals a lot, so that's a cool power to have. Um, I don't... I'm not the character, uh so I can't turn into animals. But um, if I were given that power, that would be cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. It's kind of hard to choose because, you know, like throughout the entire movie, we're, you know, always running away from something incredibly dangerous. So I wouldn't want to be in that situation. But, right. Um, you know. But the magic stuff is cool. Magic stuff is cool. All right, we have Tanya next. Thank you, Zoe. Hi, I'm Tanya with alolalambchops.com. So, don't tell your friends, but you two are my favorite duo in the movie. Um, so, just want you to know that. <laughs> nice. High fives. Um, so, my question is, in the game Dungeons & Dragons, there's a lot of opportunity for improv. Were you two able to do any improvisation in any of your scenes? There's a... There's not really i'm not really an improv person i mean like i would do it but um, and john and jonathan knew exactly what they wanted with every single scene so and, and had such a tight script that they they weren't uh necessarily looking for improv however some of us took liberties there's a few improvs of mine that made it into the movie mm -hmm. uh which i'm really proud of um and Chris improvises a lot, obviously. Yes. <laughs> That's it. And Hugh, I guess, improvises yeah, improv a lot too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, so yeah, there's some there's there's some improv in the movie. But most of it is scripted, which is just is a testament to John and Jonathan, because they're incredibly funny and they they knew exactly what was going to make people laugh. Thank you. Okay, and we have Amanda next. Hi, I'm Amanda from Guide for Geek Moms. Thank you for coming Christ, to chat with you. us, and you're also my favorite. Yes. <laughs> uh, I loved it. I and I'm telling you, I am obsessed with the corpse scene. It was just yes. so clever, like well written, and I was so funny. It was I was laughing till I had tears. So I was wondering if either of you or both of you could tell us a bit about you know filming that scene. Oh, that scene was so cool. I Those people did such a good job, and, you know... The had, people in the corpse suits. I had to be in there for hours, and I, I really... And, like, with that heavy makeup on, Really too, intense prosthetics. Really intense prosthetics, so um, kudos to them. I don't know if I could have done what they could have done. Well, I, I probably... No, I don't know. I, don't know. I, I would like to be. I yeah. I would like to have that opportunity, but... Um, that scene actually was shot on stage, which was uh, crazy, because a lot of our locations in the movie are... Are shot on location. On location. Like we found these beautiful backdrops in Ireland. Well, we're just not like we're but gonna the, start actually digging. <laughs> I know into the <laughs> earth. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> that whole graveyard. graveyard was built on stage. <laughs> they like hauled in all of this soil. Right. And they brought the horses inside. They brought the horses <laughs> which inside. Which I found to be wild. Yeah. 
And also, um, holding a torch is not a thing any human being should do. That is, sh- it's so it's dangerous. So, you're so hooked on this. Because it's terrible. It is a ball of fire on the end of a stick. Not like a Don't put it candle. to your face. I don't it's know. A fl- it's huge. It's not the size of your head. Okay. And we, we all had these wigs on covered yeah. in hairspray. Yeah. And it was just a disaster waiting to happen. It was scary. I liked it, though. I like danger. Wild. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Victor, you're next. Hi, I'm Victor um, from Fandaz.com. Uh, Justice Sophia, thank you for your time today. Uh, Justice, it's, it's known that you're a huge uh, Pokemon fan. So in this Dungeons & Dragons world, if you could bring one of the ghost characters with you on this adventure, which character would you choose? Which character from the Pokemon world would I choose to bring with me on the D&D adventure? Yeah, what's your favorite Pokemon? Well, my... Stop it. <laughs> my favorite Pokemon is Totodile. From Pokemon Gold. He was the starter Pokemon Pokemon Gold. Wow, really? I always chose him. Yeah, I love yeah, him. Yeah. Uh, but which Pokemon would I bring with me? Uh, Pikachu is the easy answer. I'm not going to say Pikachu. Maybe Gengar. Gengar is a ghost Pokemon. He's really big and scary and cool, and I love him. And I feel like the ghost thing would fit in the D&D world. Mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I feel like mm-hmm, there are, mm-hmm. there's ghosts in this D and D world. There's no ghosts in this. Not in movie. our movie, but um, but I feel like in the are, world there are D and D monsters that are technically ghosts. Yes. Okay. Yeah. There, there you go. There are ghosts in D and D. Yes. There you go. All right, Ashley. I'm gonna have you ask Thank one you. more question. All right. So fingers crossed, we're gonna get like a cinematic universe out of this. So we're gonna pretend that we're putting it out there and it's gonna happen. Where would you like to see? The adventures take your characters next. I really want to be possessed by an evil entity. You're and done that. Oh, not evil. No, entity, not yeah. evil. I want to be possessed by an evil entity and become a villain. Okay. I really, and then I have to be saved by my friends. But that's, I, I'm like putting myself at the center of the story. I like to have, um, more screen time. <laughs> more screen time? Sorry, screen time. <laughs> because she didn't. Because all of her characters' screen time is in the form of animals. Yeah. Uh, she just I... wants to be in the movie, Sophia. <laughs> I want to be in the movie <laughs> and the next one. Um, you know what would be cool for your character? <laughs> Hold on. You know what would be cool for your character? What? If you can, if you like change just like one limb of yours. Into yeah, an animal yeah, limb. yeah, 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 so yeah. Then your face is on camera, oh, yeah. but you have like an owl bear arm. I have them like turn into like some something like a uh, owl bear arm, or like even like a yeah. tentacle or a something. A tentacle, and yeah. And then I don't have cool. to do anything. I'll just stand there, and they can do everything for yeah, me. There you go. Beat everyone up by putting my hand out. Yeah, that's cool. Um, that's cool. Uh, I also want to use my horns to headbutt somebody. Yeah. That's nice. my that's my goal for next time. All right, Dana, do you have one more question? Okay, so Justice, uh, we had read somewhere that you had added some sign language into your spell choreography. Can you talk a little bit more about that and how that kind of came to be? Sure, yeah. I worked with a choreographer on what I was going to do for the gestures. I don't like in movies when people just gesture vaguely, like fingers splayed in a direction and like they expect something to happen i feel like that's lazy so i really wanted to ground it in some form of i just wanted to ground it in something and i and i've been learning sign language for a while now and so i would take the the sign of the word that had to do with the intended action of the spell and morph it slightly to make it a little bit more spell castery. Do you have an example? Do you remember one? Yeah, one that I did was um, for the fresh cut grass yeah. smell spell. Uh, I the grass in sign language is this, or I think this this is also grass, or this might be garden. I'm not sure, but I was like, this isn't spell castery enough. So I I took the word for garden, the sign for garden, which is. Well, this is garden, which is grow, but two times. Or you can do, um, like, a grow box, which is garden. So I'd, I would go grow, grow, and then I would, like, splay it out to the audience. <laughs> and then I would say the word with it. So, abralapek. And then, go. Wow. Yeah. But that was, that's not even one of the, the cooler gestures. I like but that's that. how it's kind I of weird. I remember you trying language. to figure out This one, one is the coolest. Yeah, that one's the coolest. But that's not sign language. That's just cool. Yeah. 
All right, guys, that's the time we had. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for joining. I will ask you to please sign out now. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.